Travelling as a musician is never straightforward. No matter if you're driving, taking a plane, a train, a boat or a bus or any other form of transport, there are always things that you'll need to be conscious of. I'm going to be speaking in this video as somebody who has a lot of experience travelling with a guitar on his back. So here are five things that you should know about travelling as a musician. Number one is travelling with an instrument on an aeroplane. Getting the guitar on board an aeroplane isn't as straightforward as you might think. There's a huge amount of discussion about this among guitar players and instrumentalists in general as to whether or not you're, you'll be able to get your instrument on board. In my experience, most of the American um, airline companies seem to be okay about it for the most part. So I'm talking about American Airlines, Delta, United, um, Southwest. Um, I think those are all the airlines that I've traveled on uh, in the US. Uh, there's a law in the USA which states that you are allowed to bring your instrument on board in most cases and I think the specifics of it, it kind of boils down to as long as you're not taking up room on somebody else that you're able to bring your guitar on board. As long as there's a space for it um, in the cabin it can be brought on without any extra charge. Um, then elsewhere I've had good experiences with um, Aer Lingus, the Irish carrier, um, KLM in the Netherlands, SAS. Uh, Lufthansa in Germany as well. Um, there are some airlines though that I've had bad experiences with across the board. Um, Aerofloat in Russia being one of them. British Airways tend not to be great with instruments. Ryanair are terrible for instruments as well unless you buy an extra seat. EasyJet, same kind of thing as well. And I've heard a lot of horror stories from people about Air Canada. I don't have that experience myself, but I've definitely heard that Air Canada is one to be avoided um, with an instrument. It really comes down to checking the small print with all of these airlines before you travel with your instrument, if it's possible. Um, in my experience, talking to the staff who actually handle your boarding card and your passport just before you board the plane, uh, talking to them kind of helps uh, kind of ensure that the process goes smoothly to get the instrument on board. I'll often go up to um, one of the uh, airline staff who are going to be doing all that that kind of second part of, of checking in just as you get onto the plane and I'll often ask them what kind of plane uh, we're going to be boarding and the reason being that sometimes the plane's cabins as in the overhead cabins can be too small for your instrument to fit into so for example any of the planes that I get onto that have three seats in every row, I know that there'll be plenty of room in the overhead cabin for my guitar, but sometimes the smaller planes you get onto that only have two seats per row, they can sometimes be a little bit more constricted as far as um, you know the amount of space in the in the overhead bin. So it's not always a guarantee that you know when you get your guitar on board that the guitar will actually fit into the overhead cabin. And I am talking about the guitar a lot here, but this really goes for any instrument of a similar size. The smaller the instrument you have, if you have something like a mandolin or a violin or generally something that will fit into a smaller case, the less issues you'll have. But something bigger like a guitar guitar or maybe a, even a cello or something like that, um, you may face uh, more difficulties than normal. So my preference on board the plane is always for the guitar to be close to me in the overhead locker um, as much as possible. Now sometimes that isn't possible, sometimes it's the look of the draw that by the time you board the plane, if you don't have priority boarding, sometimes you'll find that you'll get to where uh, your seat is on the airplane and there won't be enough space. Maybe there'll be bags in there already. You'll look for other bins that you'll be able to put your guitar or your instrument into, and sometimes it may just not work out. Some airlines are okay about, you know, if you have a seat beside you, that they'll give you an extra strap for the instrument so you can strap it in and keep it beside you. Some of them uh, demand uh, it to be in an overhead locker, and sometimes they can make provisions for that. Um, if that doesn't work, what I'll often look to do is I'll look to put it into the cabin at the front of the plane if the plane is big enough. The transcontinental uh, planes, uh, you know, so like the likes of the ones that I would be taking from Ireland to the USA and back, they're really, really big planes and they've got lockers up the front. And I'm not quite sure what they're used for. It, it, it seems to me like they're kind of used for uh, staff. Uh, baggage and clothes and coats and stuff like that but it fits a guitar for the most part so if I have no luck with the overhead um, cabin I'll often ask if I can put the guitar up in that locker um, up the front and I've even heard once or twice 
of uh, people putting their guitar in along with the pilot. Now, I've never heard of that myself, but I have heard of it. Ha- I haven't done it myself, I should say, but I have heard of it happening as well. Um, so that's uh, kind of, that would be my preference for where the guitar would go on the plane. It would be beside me in the overhead. It would be in a locker um, up the front or at the back of the plane. But then, of course, we get into not being able to store the guitar on board. There are certain cases where you'll get onto the plane with the guitar, there'll be no room for it, and then they tell you, oh, sorry, you've got to take the guitar off now, and we need to put it underneath the plane. As much as possible, I try to fight this, because your guitar is not only um, expensive, um, but also, depending on whether or not it's insured, and it should be, um, that can be a huge financial hit if it gets broken or damaged. And more importantly, if you're on the way to a gig, as I often am on the same day, you can't be without your instrument for your show or for your performance or recording or whatever it might be. So uh, I'll fight them as much as I can uh, to, in order to keep the guitar on board. Sometimes, though, it, there's no way around it. You have to make the gig, you have to make the uh, whatever you're doing in a different country or a different city. And so you have to let the guitar go underneath. Now, in general, I'm a bit happier about that in the USA because what you'll notice in the USA is that on the the jet bridge itself, as in where you the thing you walk down to board the plane, they take your uh, luggage, your hand luggage, away from you there. They handle it. They bring it down to the next person, and that person loads it onto the plane. Um, they're usually careful enough for the most part from what I've seen about instruments and things that seem delicate Um, and then on the other side they take it out there and they give it back to the person on the far side once the plane has landed and you get it back as you walk into the terminal which is okay for the most part in Europe it's a little bit different Um, any time that's happened to me in Europe I've been really worried because it goes through the baggage system and when it goes through the baggage system it can hit off other bags people can be really mindless and careless um, about throwing uh, instruments the same way they throw bags Um, so it's it's no real surprise sometimes that if things go through the baggage system that they come out broken on the other side so I try to avoid that as much as possible. Another question that comes up an awful lot about travelling on an aeroplane with a guitar is whether or not to use a hard case or a soft case and in my experience I've always travelled with a good what you would call soft case. Uh, The case that I use is called a mono vertigo bag Uh, It's very well padded, but it's still technically what you would call a soft case because it can bend over. That's how most airlines seem to decide whether or not a guitar is, is, you know, okay to come on board or not by the bag being able to bend. I don't really understand it, but there you go. So I use a soft case and I bring it with me on my back. Um, I have seen a lot of people boarding Uh, airplanes with hard cases as well so that sometimes is allowable but again it depends completely on the airline and I found in in my own experience it actually depends a lot on the staff as well some staff have it in their head that guitars are totally not allowed on board and some staff are really easy about it and and, you know they have no um, issue with it and this is within the same airline Um, and, and this goes you know across countries, across continents, uh, across airlines. It's just the look of the draw sometimes, whoever you get. Uh, But if there's ever an issue, I'll always make sure to to put up a fight before, unfortunately, sometimes having to watch the guitar go underneath the plane. But in most cases, that doesn't happen. The guitar usually comes on board with me. And while we're still on the subject of travelling by aeroplane, I would advise anyone who's on any kind of a flight Uh, especially musicians, I suppose, but really anybody, uh, to make sure to get up to move around uh, while you're on an aeroplane. Get up and move around and, you know, keep the blood flowing in your body because I know that sometimes if I've been on a transatlantic flight and it's seven or eight hours and I wake up and I haven't been moving around, you know, if I've been fast asleep or if I've been, you know, on my phone or writing or whatever it might be, um, or watching a film, I'll get up and I'll feel really stiff and, you know, my body feels a bit you know, it doesn't feel active and ready to go. So I'll often um, do my my finger exercises and stretch my arms out, walk up and down the plane. And I found that particularly useful in cases where I have to get off an airplane and go to a venue and do a gig um, or go straight to like a radio show or, or a TV thing or whatever. 
sometimes you don't get as much time as you might like to warm up and practice. So on the plane, part of what I end up doing is doing all of my finger stretching exercises, making sure the blood is flowing around my hands so that if I have to take out the guitar and play straight away, I'm giving myself a head start. So that's an important thing to keep in mind um, when you're on any of those kind of long journeys. And that doesn't really only go for planes, it also goes for trains, buses to some extent. Um, any kind of transport where you have the freedom to be able to kind of stretch your arms out, stretch your body out, and most importantly do those hand exercises. Number two is choosing what to put in your guitar case and then what to put into your luggage. Now this always depends on where I'm traveling to and what the rules of the airline or the train company are. Uh, but in general, in the guitar bag I'll put in all the things I need to bring with me in case my bag doesn't show up and in my luggage case or my main bag, that will be everything else. So in my guitar bag, on my back, I'll have the guitar itself with the strap, um, I'll have a guitar lead, I'll have a DI box with me, uh, my guitar capo and strings and a string winder, I might also bring a shirt or a t-shirt, uh, I'll have my phone charger, I'll have adapters, um, you know, anything that I will need in case the bag doesn't show up, all of the essential things. And this, you know, not even mentioning here things like, you know, my passport and my essentials and stuff, stuff we'll be going through later in the video. Um, but I bring all of those with me um, because it'll happen, your bag won't show up and you still need to do the gig, you still need to do what you need to do. So I have all of the essential things on my back and on my person so that if my luggage for whatever reason doesn't show up after a flight or it gets stolen or whatever it might be that I can still go and do the gig that I need to do and then deal with um, you know getting the bag back uh, at some point in the future hopefully. It's an important thing too to tell any of the um, security checkpoints that you meet um, you know, such as airport security or in certain countries going into train stations and bus stations, you have to go through like a airport style security. Um, it's important to tell them that if you're bringing a guitar or if you have your pedal board with you as hand luggage or something like that, to tell them that it's equipment and that it's not anything malicious because you put that stuff through and it comes up on a scanner and you know all the sirens start going off because they see cables and switches and wires and all kinds of stuff. So you start getting a lot of funny looks very quickly. So it's important to tell them, look, this is equipment. If you need me to open it up, I'll happily open up the bag, show you everything I have in here. Um, because as I said, they can look really suspicious. And most of the time where I have had my pedal board with me, um, traveling through airport security, it always gets pulled out. It always needs to be searched, you know, and they always ask me if there's anything dangerous or explosive in there or anything like that. Um, and usually that happens with the guitar case as well. In most cases going through airport security, um, they'll make me empty out every pocket of the guitar case. So if I've got, you know, my essentials in the top pocket and the bottom pocket and maybe the back pocket as well, everything comes out of the case. The guitar comes out of the case. Even the sound hole cover comes out of the guitar and they take swabs from everywhere, test it, and it always comes back fine. Um, but it is a little bit of a pain unpacking all of that stuff and then having to pack it back in, in particular if you're rushing to get a flight. Um, so prepare for that. Then usually in my luggage case, my big case, um, I've got my pedal board, I've got my clothes for wearing on stage and my clothes for traveling or days off. I've got my merchandise CDs and t-shirts and my toiletries um, as well. Most airlines have a limit of about 23 kilograms, which is about 50 pounds. Um, in most territories, but sometimes that can be less. When I was traveling back from Russia a couple of years ago, the limit was 20 kilograms, um, and then other airlines I've been on have been up to like 25 kilos or even 30 kilos. Um, so the pedal board is what usually takes up an awful lot of that in my luggage, and when I can, in, particularly, in particular after doing a transatlantic flight, what I'll often do is I'll take my pedal board out of my luggage case and I can bring that on most American airlines um, as uh, part of my hand luggage, my guitar and my pedal board, which means I can get more stuff into my, my luggage case. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'd, I'd aim to do with my big luggage case. The only thing I've never traveled with that I don't have any experience with, um, but I, I usually make plans to, to get around it, is I've never traveled with my amplifier. 
um, because uh, Udo amps always sort me out with uh, a, a, a Decapo amp wherever I'm going. So if I'm going to the States, I'll organize to have it to pick up an amp somewhere. I'll bring that amp with me on the tour and then I'll, I'll leave it back where I got it and go back to Ireland. Same thing if I'm going to Germany or, or wherever it is, anywhere in Europe or even over in Russia, the same thing. Um, I'll organize to pick up an amp rather than bringing it with me because that's a lot of extra weight. Um, and that makes the traveling process an awful lot easier not having to deal with that. If you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to the Fretboard Atlas over on truefire.com. I've got over 500 videos of material there covering everything from playing the guitar to music theory to videos like this one, traveling as a musician, original tunes, a lot of traditional Irish music, and pretty much every topic that I can think of and that I'm able to teach, that's what's going on over on the Fretboard Atlas. The third thing is going through airports, bus stations, train stations, that kind of thing. Train and bus stations are, for the most part, very straightforward. Show up, have your ticket, get on the train or bus and go where you need to go. Um, always book a seat in advance wherever you can and expect delays, no matter what kind of transport you're taking, even if you're driving yourself. Expect delays, expect traffic, expect things not to show up when they should and not to arrive when they should. Um, so you have to mitigate for all of that. Um, I'm a big believer in leaving early and getting somewhere early to avoid all of that hassle. Um, airline connections are a different story. Um, you know, going through an airport, you know, even when you expect it not to be busy, can sometimes be exceptionally busy. Sometimes things break down. Sometimes computer systems aren't working. So more often than not, you find yourself delayed um, going through um, a an airport and in particular getting connections, connecting flights. For me, I find that they need to be a minimum of about 90 minutes long to make sure nothing goes wrong. Because you can arrive, but your bag may not necessarily arrive and get to where it needs to be at the same time as you do. And I, I learned that recently um, traveling to Poland. I had a connection in Amsterdam after leaving Dublin and I had a very tight turnaround. It was, it was something like 45 minutes, which is not something I'd usually do, but it was the only flight option available because everything is so restricted now after the pandemic. And uh, yeah, unfortunately my bag didn't arrive, so I arrived in Warsaw with just my guitar and my essentials on my back. Um, so it's, it's always something to keep in mind, and I, I sort of had a feeling that that might happen as well because the turnaround was so quick. But uh, 90 minutes, is, is an hour and a half, is usually what I would leave uh, as, you know, an, an ample amount of time in order to connect, to make sure that your bag arrives on the other side. You'll make it through the airport in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, no problem. But the bag takes a little bit longer. Um, the other issue as well is that if you're traveling in Europe, most of Europe is in the Schengen area. Some of it isn't. So it depends on the country that you're traveling to. Sometimes you go through passport control um, you know, when you land in Europe, sometimes then as you're traveling through an airport, you have to go through passport control again. So for example, if you were flying from say Canada into somewhere like France, and then you were traveling to Ireland, or a better example is going into um, Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, that airport is divided into a Schengen side and a non-Schengen side. Um, so sometimes you have to go through passport control again in order to go to a different country and that's something I have to factor in when I'm looking at these connection times in Europe to know that sometimes I'll need a bit of extra time because the queue for the uh, the internal passport control is going to be so long. Same thing if you're taking a, uh, a flight that connects through the United States. Sometimes you can get an airport that has pre-clearance, like in Dublin Airport, you can do all the US customs before you travel. But in most cases, if you're taking a connecting flight via the USA, you need to go through customs there before you actually get your connecting flight in most cases. Um, so again, those are all things that I factor in when I'm actually looking at the flights that I'm going to book because it isn't as simple as just booking a flight and saying, great, I'm going to make it. Sometimes you actually won't make it. And, uh, you know, when it comes to stuff like passport control, the airlines don't really have any say over any of that stuff. They look at it as your problem if you don't make the flight. Um, so, yeah, wherever possible, I like to get into the city I'm going to or the town I'm going to as early as possible um, in order to mitigate for all of those delays. So number four is the essentials. So these are things like, you know, a water bottle, a power bank, 
um, adapters for different countries, all these things that you need on a sort of a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of my um, shows uh, and contacts that I have, I'm talking to them on the day. Sometimes if I'm on an airplane or a train or whatever, I mightn't actually get to charge my phone and I need it, of course, for talking to the contacts. Um, you know, talking to the agent or talking to um, whoever's booking the gig or the venue promoter or whatever it might be. Um, you need all these things on your person as you're traveling. So I always make sure to have a power bank and make sure it's charged up. Um, as I said, adapters for each country that I'm visiting. Um, at the moment, the COVID pass is a big thing. It may or may not continue to be a big thing, but I've got that on my phone in case I need to scan in anywhere. Um, I bring wireless headphones with me everywhere, which is a really, really good idea because sometimes you can be in really noisy environments and all you want to do is sleep or take it easy or whatever. So I really recommend the noise cancelling uh, wireless headphones. They make life a lot easier um, at times. Um, other things I bring with me are things like um, a pen and paper. I'll always have those in the front of my um, guitar bag. Um, that can be for like set lists or taking notes or writing down ideas or songwriting on the move or whatever it might be. Um, the, the obvious things are things like my passport, any I forms of ID, uh, like my you know my driver's license, um, bank cards, and um, actually an important thing about bank cards is making sure to let your bank know that you're going to be abroad. Uh, because otherwise, you know, they, they might see your activity as suspicious and block your card. That's happened to me a couple of times when I've forgotten to do it. Um, and then another important thing as well is your boarding card. If you're going to board on a train or on um, an airplane or something like that, as much as possible, try to have the digital version of the boarding card and the physical version of the boarding card as well, because sometimes you know, your phone can die or your iPad or your tablet or whatever can die. Sometimes you lose your physical boarding pass and you can't find it. And these can be really troublesome issues, um, you know, depending on who you meet and what, what part of the process you're in. Um, so it can be handy to have those as a backup. If you can get your digital boarding pass on your phone as well as a physical copy, at least you have a backup then for getting on and off whatever form of transport you're going to be on. Medicine is an important one too. I suffer with hay fever, or more correctly it's called allergic rhinitis. Um, so things like pollen and the dust and stuff like that, that can affect me an awful lot. So I've got um, tablets that I bring with me um, to, to combat that in case it ever flares up. Um, things, you know, like paracetamol or stuff to kind of combat headaches or pains, um, they can be important as well, and ibuprofen. And then something I've learned going country to country is that sometimes whatever's in the food or whatever's in the water in particular in different countries can have a huge effect on your digestive system and how food moves through your body. Sometimes it makes it move through very quickly and sometimes it makes it move through very slowly as well. So I always make sure to have uh, medicine with me that can help me combat that in case I need to, you know, do three or four shows in a row. I can't be afford. Uh, you know, I can't afford to be sitting in the hotel room feeling sorry for myself. I need to be on the move. So I bring this medicine with me just to make life kind of as easy as possible, even if it's not easy, to try to make it a little bit easier. And then the last thing that's important is your health insurance details. Um, for us Europeans, we've got an E111 card, which gives us, you know, healthcare rights all over Europe. And then I've also got my own personal um, private health insurance as well here, which covers me worldwide in case anything goes wrong. So I've always got that in my wallet if, and I hope it never happens, but if some emergency um, professional is, you know, taking out my wallet, trying to find out who I am, um, you know, that they can find my health insurance details very quickly and that they can find my info about, you know, who to contact in an emergency, you know, next of kin and, you know, my partner's name and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's all important info to have on your person as well. So the fifth and final thing that I want to talk about is security. And this goes for whether you're a musician or not. Sometimes you get onto public transport, like, you know, if you have a four hour train journey somewhere and you just want to sleep, you want to take it easy and recuperate and rest. Sleeping on public transport can feel really strange when your stuff isn't secure. And I think as a result, that's why I'm a really bad sleeper on things like trains and planes and stuff like that. I, uh, I have real problems getting asleep and I think there, it's something to do with not 
wanting my things to be robbed or taken. Um, whereas I found that when I'm traveling with my fiance, you know, I have no problem when she's beside me, I'll fall asleep straight away. So I think it's a very kind of deep rooted security thing more than anything else. Um, but things you can do to mitigate that, bringing a chain and a lock to tie your stuff onto the railings on a train or a bus um, can be really, really useful just to ensure that your stuff doesn't get taken. Um, especially when you're sitting away from it, sometimes the seat that you have, if it's assigned to you, um, sometimes the seat you have doesn't get, keep your gear in your um, line of vision, uh, which is something I try to avoid as much as possible. So, um, you know, always try and sit somewhere on public transport where you can keep an eye on your belongings, um, especially as people are getting on and off. You know, if you're at a train stop or a bus stop or whatever, you want to make sure that you're kind of taking a look that nobody's taking your stuff. And if it's chained in, if it's locked in and you're the only one who can actually pick it up, um, that can help an awful lot in just feeling a bit more secure about that. Um, kind of common sense would tell you not to leave your gear in any uh, one place or to leave it unattended or to leave it with somebody that you don't know particularly well. You always want to bring it with you. So if I'm going in and out to the bathroom in a train station or an airport or anything like that, I bring everything that I have with me because I don't usually travel with anybody else. Um, and in particular, I suppose, with buses, in that most of the time their storage is underneath where you sit, so you can't really see it at all. Um, I try to avoid that as much as possible. I'll always try to bring my guitar on board and my luggage on board as well, if I can. Now, it's been a while since I've taken a bus as I've been touring, but it happens every now and again where you have to take a bus wherever you're going. Um, so I would actually get the guitar and sit it on my knee if I have to, you know, in its in its case. And it's not a particularly comfortable journey, but you've got your guitar 100% definitely on the other side. You know, you're coming out with your guitar, whereas if it's underneath the bus, you know, you mightn't be as sure of it. The same thing with um, trains. You've got these, um, it depends on the train. Sometimes you've got overhead storage. Sometimes you've got these racks at either end of the carriage and um, that's where the chain and the lock comes in particularly handy. Um, if you don't have that, you really do have to keep an eye on it to make sure nobody takes your bag accidentally or that nobody's looking at your guitar thinking, I'm gonna take that guitar with me today. Um, so it's an important thing to always keep an eye on all of your equipment. It's, it can be a real pain, but it's something that just comes with the territory. An important thing I've learned as well is that you want to make sure that your bag has an easily identifiable feature so that in case it gets lost um, or misplaced, uh, that if somebody is looking for it, that they can identify it quickly. So for example, my touring bag has a lot of stickers on it from different festivals that I've been at, and I would know seeing it from a mile away, that's my bag. But somebody on an airport who's looking through a lost and found is looking at a hundred bags. They're not going to see my Woodsong sticker or my, my name written on the side of it. What they will see is the pink ribbon that I have tied around the handle at the top. And that has saved me two or three times um, when my bag has gone missing in different countries. That I can say very easily, it's a large grey bag and it's got a pink ribbon tied on the top handle. And once they find that, then they can see that my name is written down the side of it and that there are all these stickers all over the bag and, you know, um, you know, different things like that about the bag. But what identifies it straight away is that little pink ribbon tied around um, the top. And, you know, from there, you know, I've got my name written on the bag and my phone number and my email address and stuff like that. So that if it does get lost, it's easily identifiable. Um, but what, what actually does it in the first place is the little pink ribbon. So I hope this video gives you some insight and help into what it's like to travel as a musician. If you have any recommendations about traveling alone as a musician, I'd love to hear them. Make sure to leave them in the comments and let all of us know what they are because the more tips we can get and the easier we can make traveling as a musician, the more peace of mind we'll have overall. So thanks for watching. See you next time.